Okay, so I've got three examples of cubes here. Uh, one of them as uh, auto smooth applied. Um, so as you can see, there's some groups are smoothed and others aren't. Um, but it, from a distance, looks okay. The second one is where the, I've used one smoothing group. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's look in here. So you can see they're all in one smoothing group. Um, and then the third one, and that's pretty decent as well. But you're getting some kind of weirdness going on here. And then the third one is the one that's using the face weighted normals. Uh, so that is basically the same as this one, but essentially I've used the weighted normal script here to generate them. So I can show that on this one actually. So if we take this and generate the script, it basically uh, weights the normals based on the, the relationship between the two, the, you know, the size of the objects, and it gives generally a better result. It doesn't work with everything, and it can cause you a few problems here and there, but um, for things that are fairly straightforward like this, it does work reasonably well. I'll just go back. That's what it was like beforehand. Um, so this is the one that I'm going to take through into Substance. Painter, um, and we're going to add some details to it. So I'll see you there. Okay, so I'm in Substance, and I'm going to create a new file, and I've exported out my weighted normal cube, um, and I'm just going to load it in. And there we go. And as you can see from distance, it still looks all the weighted normal stuff's come through. It looks fairly decent. Now. In previous things we've looked at, we've not really looked at the kind of height, dealing with height information. And there's tons of ways you can get this in. You can use DDo and all sorts of stuff. Sorry, Endo. All sorts of stuff like that. However, I'm going to show you how to do some of this stuff in Paint. And once you get your head around it, it's actually quite simple. Um, but it's kind of... There's a, there's a process you have to follow. And the process really is that you have to... Um, you have to do the main normal and bump detail stuff I would advise you do first before you start adding you know, loads of materials and things like that. Mainly because anything you add in the bump map won't contribute to the uh, won't contribute to the normal map so um, it won't take into consideration where those edges are and stuff when it does the smart material stuff so it doesn't really look right um, it doesn't quite give you the detail in the effect you're after, so it kind of makes sense to do this stuff first. Um, they have, in more recent builds, have tried to get around it by creating um, in filters. There's this um, matte effects detail, uh, which you can look at uh, for doing edge wear, but it it feels a bit sort of specific to basically just creating edge wear. Um, and I still think this is doing it this way is the more solid way of doing a kind of a, a more general approach. Anyway, so there's two things you can, if you want to add bump detail, um, there's two ways you can do it. And the first one is using the height channel. So if we, and the way we do that, or the best way to do it is if you create a fill layer, um, and then within that fill layer, you actually want to switch everything off except height, and then you're just left with this. Um, now, if you push this under zero, you'll basically get height detail that goes in, and if you push this above zero, you'll get high detail that goes out, so an outie. So let's start with an inny first. So we're going to just, just push it. We can change this as we go along. It's completely non-destructive, which is what's so awesome about it. Um, so we'll push it in. And as you can see, absolutely nothing changes. But don't worry about that. Um, we're going to add a black mask. So we hide the bump detail, as we've done with other things in the past. And then we're going to add a paint layer. You can paint directly into this, but I would rather create a paint layer and then I can change things as I go along. Now that I can paint, I can basically make a difference between the surface underneath and the surface above, and that will basically allow the bump stuff to actually show through. So if I start to paint, so if I click and I'm going to left, uh, sorry, hold the uh, shift key down so that I can draw a straight line and then left click again, I've essentially created some bump detail. 
not the straightest ever, but you know, it's it's there. And I'm just painting directly onto the model. Now this isn't actually creating bump this isn't actually creating any geometry or anything else. It's just giving the impression that there is some detail there. Um, if I want to remove some of this stuff or change it, I can hit the X key and that will switch me to black. So this way I'm set on the, the my color set to white. So I'm painting the maximum amount in black. I'm painting it out and again, and I can go back through and you know, if I wanted to do some weird sort of abstract shape here, fill those bits in, I could do. And, you know, if I go somewhere between the two, so set it at like 0.5, I'm painting halfway in and halfway out. As you can see, it's quite, it is quite versatile. Um, so that's that. If I go back into the paint layer, the fill layer, and change this, I can actually push it further in, or I can actually push it out. So as you can see, you've got a lot of control. But what if you want both? What if you want innies and outies? Well, I'm afraid the way to do it is essentially to create a new fill layer. Um, do the same thing again. So you can just duplicate it if you want to make life easy for yourself. Select it to height, add a black mask, and add a paint layer. And then I can start to paint outies as well as innies in the same space. And again, same thing goes, but it will only work on the stuff that's in this layer. As you can see, this will allow me to have super outies, more innies, um, and you've got tons of control. Outy. Inny. There you go. So that's that's more or less how you can go around and basically point, uh, paint uh, that kind of detail in. Oh, and another thing as well is the, the, I'm just using a basic brush, but I can just go in here and uh, say on my any uh, one, um, if I wanted to paint like scratches or something like that in, um, so I have to do some ward or something like that. I could go onto this. So I'll go and do it on this side, so I'm not destroying everything. Um, then I could go to my brush and I could pick a different brush. So something that's got kind of more texture to it. And uh, if I go on the paint layer and I'm on the right mode, I can paint, you know, detail in that way. You can see it's like softer, kind of gives me a harder edge. So we do something like that. Uh, in fact, let's just leave that there like that. Um, and then you can layer these things up or you could do things like uh, you could actually have a normal brush like this. And then in the alpha, you can pick a new alpha. So if I go for, say, scratches, so I pick something like these scratches, then I can actually paint. these into this sort of surface. And in fact, let's pick a different one. Something that's a little less. There, that one's a better one. Yeah, so this is quite a nice, you know, for laying in kind of general scratches. And it's, you go like, well, that's just a bit over the top. Well, the cool thing is if you hit X, then what you can do is you can actually start to paint them back out again. So around the edges using the same thing and what you get is you get something that doesn't feel like it's completely repeating um, 
and it has texture and tone to it, but it's quite subtle. Or can be quite subtle. Across the surface. You can do that sort of stuff with bump stuff really nicely. And um, other things you can do are um, so we'll look at uh, the normal maps. So that's the bump stuff taken care of. The other thing you can do is you can paint with normal maps and it has a bunch of these in here. We call them the hard surfaces but it's not really that obvious how they work. Um, so if you just go to create a new layer it doesn't need to be a fill layer uh, and we're going to basically paint this normal de detail directly onto the surface. Um, so we uh, go and get a brush just a standard default brush is fine and then what we're going to paint is in with this brush is going to paint normal detail. So if we switch off color, metal, roughness and height, we basically just have this channel here for normal. If we drop a shape in there, so let's put one of these door panels in. Then we have this to paint with. Now this is getting slightly cut off by the alpha of the brush. If you ever have that, then you can just switch the alpha off. And then it'll actually let you paint it in. Um, the you basically can line it up where you want it to go and click, and there you go. And you realize that's got. I mean, it's still flat, obviously, but it just feels like it's got a little bit more detail in it. Um, uh, you can, if you hold Control down and left click and up and down, you can change the angle these place themselves at. Um, if as you as you're orbiting round, if you hold so you're holding Alt and left click, if you hold Shift, it'll actually snap to a front view. And um, if you want to uh, be in orthographic view, it is F6. So currently, if you're in perspective, you can switch to orthographic, and then it'll give you a flat on view, which is probably more useful for when you're trying to place this kind of stuff. Um, or you can go into here and you can just place this stuff wherever you want and if you you know if your UVs are a better option so let's have a look where did that go if we look at this there it is so that's placed there nice and straight so you see that works quite well two back to that um, F6 F5 to get back into perspective view um, so the other thing you can do, so you can do loads with this. Um, so if you wanted to put like a latch or something like that across a corner, you should be able to do that. Um, let's find, let's try that. So let's just drop that into there. And let's turn it that way. Change the scale of it. It's a bit smaller and then drop it on and you can see that that's could be like a latch going around the corner and it's fairly convincing works reasonably well um, and it gives you a few more options so if you aren't interested in doing you know stuff with that brush this is a way you could do it if i wanted to apply a smart material to this and have all this detail, you'd hope that you could sort of bake, do your normal thing, bake textures out. So let's bake these at 2048. Let's bake everything. Let's use. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the low poly mesh as the high poly mesh. So it'll just take the low poly detail, the, the low poly mesh we've got, and bake out as best it can. You know all of these maps. Um, so we do all of that, and we say bake. Okay, so that's all baked. So you'd think that we are good to go. So if we, we've got our bump detail and we drop this in here and let it build 
and now really um, it doesn't it just ignores all of it and even if we put it underneath it all we're getting is basically the light being kind of bent but nothing else um, and that's I mean it's okay but I mean that's not that's not that realistic and you know it doesn't take any of this into consideration and it's just a bit a bit poo really so um, how do we get around it well basically what we need to do is we need to bake out our this detail first and then rebake it so it's a bit of a um, it's a bit of a faff um, right so let's delete that for now because we don't need it so what we're going to do is we're just going to bake this light out uh, which is easy enough to do uh, just export go to export textures and um, I don't think they actually have a pro profile for it I know I've created one for myself because I do this a lot um, called normal export but we could probably create a new one so let's create a new configuration so let's hit the plus sign and uh, we'll call this uh, Dave normal Let's just call it normal only. That's a better name. So in normal only, what we want is we just want to get uh, we want uh, to output an RGB map, and we want it to be the uh, did did did. did DirectX normal from RGB channels. Um, so then, what, so what we're basically doing is the DirectX normal is the one we've been using all along, which is the you know, DirectX based normal map. And so we're taking the RGB values, an RGB map, and we're basically pulling this normal DirectX data out from it. Um, and that's basically it. Um, so if I go to export and find a place for it to go. Yes, and we're going to save it out as uh, 2048 by 2048. We're not going to make anything bigger than that, so that should be okay. And we just set pick our new config, which is normal only. Did we call it that? Normal only. There we go. And we hit export, and it says export successfully finished. So if we open the folder, then we have this, which if I click on it, looks like this. So it's basically, there's no other normal information than just, you know, the stuff that we've laid in. But it is all in there, which is cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to import that resource, add resource, this one, RGB. Um, and we're going to just stick it in our uh, it's a texture, and we're going to put it in our uh, current session, and we're going to import it. Um, and what we need to do is we just need to switch. We don't need any of this stuff now because we've brought all this. Up. We're going to apply a normal map that has this information in it. And the way we do that is we basically go to our maps that we've already made and I'm going to replace this one with what did I say it was called RGB there it is um, and there you go so all this stuff is now switched off we just have a normal map instead driving that and now we've got that we can bake rebake these textures switch off the normal map that we've already got which is the tangent one and we can bake the rest we don't need the ID map uh, but we can bake the rest and we just go make and it will build ambient occlusion and thickness and everything else as it did before but it will also take into consideration this normal map okay so we are at the point where we can apply this material back on so I'm going to use this bone stylized because this will show it quite well but basically if you drop the material on now see what you can what you'll find is it'll actually start taking this into consideration and um, so you're getting this where it's light around the top and darker on the insides and you're getting the detail in the different areas and you wouldn't have get that if you were um, if you were doing it 
if you hadn't gone through this kind of bump pass beforehand, you see in here. So if you're going to put bump detail in, I'd advise you do it first, and then you can go in and you know, change all your things that you want to do after that.